In this video, I'm going to show you how to create variables from other variables within JASP in order to create new variables. For example, creating a variable's sum of other variables, you might want to take a variable that's um, the logarithm of a pre-existing variable. You may want to just change the way a variable is coded. To do those kinds of things, um, I'll show you how to do it. It's a tiny bit clumsy. Sometimes I find it's easier just to do it in my CSV sheet that I'm pulling in, and um, and that makes it a little easier, but I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, um, the, this particular spreadsheet here, this CSV sheet, is available in the notes underneath the video so that you can pull it up and you can follow along yourself. So let me show you what to do here. To create a new variable, first you've got to pull in a data set, and again, this one is available for you to follow along if you want. And then you're going to go up here and you're going to click on that black plus. Um, and then you're going to create the name of your new variable. So let's say that I want to take my 20 scale variables, okay? And I want to um, find the sum of them, okay? And I'm going to just call it sum scale. Then what I have to do here is I have to decide, do I want to use the click and drag, drop and drag, um, editor within here, or do I want to program directly in R? Remember, JASP is a GUI wrapped around R software, which is a little more challenging to use, a little bit more like real programming. Probably you want to use this. That's what I'm going to show here in this particular video. So we'll leave that highlighted. And then I choose which type of variable I want it to be when I'm done. And in this case, I want it to be scale, which means interval ratio created. Once you've clicked on this, this should pop up. Now, one thing that I want you to be aware of, if you want to do something like add variables together and make a sum, those variables must be already the scale or interval ratio type. So if the version of the data sheet you have doesn't show it that way, you're going to make it that way. So just click on these this here. If it looks like this for each of these scale ones, you're going to want to pause, click on them, and change them so that they've got the little ruler. Okay, otherwise it won't let you add them together. Now all we're going to do to create this new variable that says some of the others is I'm going to click on the variable, the first variable, and a plus, second variable, and a plus, and so forth. It's as easy as that. It's just a little bit time consuming when you have 20 like I've got here, um, that you just got to go back and forth, okay, between the two of them. Um, now, let's suppose that I make a mistake, like I click on the 6 twice, okay, so I've got it in there twice. I'm just going to click and drag it over to that little trash can, and then it's gone. So that's all I do if I have something in there more than one time. And you can see, look, what happened here is I forgot to put the plus in. So it's dropped it down on the line below. It's kind of like saying it's saving it until you correct, uh, make a correct place for me to put it. So I'm going to go back up here, click the plus, it's put it down here. Click it up here and see it's causing me a little bit of trouble. So what I have to do is if you click and drag things around, you can eventually get things in the right place. I want that to go right there. And if all else fails, just get rid of something, an element. Okay, go ahead and drag that plus back up there now. And that one, it doesn't like it very well. I'm going to drag it over here. So sometimes this kind of thing can be, it can be pretty finicky. What I've got to do, I've got to get that back up there now. Okay, the seven. Okay, there we go. You want that green oval to show up and then it can be put in there and it's going to put the plus. So, so sometimes you end up again with these finicky things and that's one reason that I like to do it in Excel or as a CSV file or anywhere else often. Um, it's not really quick when you've got 20 of these like these you're trying to do, especially if you're trying to talk at the same time. And so you manage to mess things up quite often, but um, it is doable. So here we go. And again, if something is refusing to go, it often means what you're doing is you're, you're either have the wrong kind of variable, you need to change the variable type, or if that's not the case, often you're trying to do things in the wrong order or put things in the wrong place. So it's made to be kind of easy, but um, sometimes, sometimes it can drive me crazy, you know, it's just not, you know, and now I have to keep scrolling over to see what I did to make sure that I'm doing it correctly, otherwise I'm not really sure to keep scrolling that over. So again, this would have been a little bit faster, or a lot faster, to just go ahead and do it 
in Excel. I think I'm up to 18. I've got two more to go. Now, adding these in here isn't the end of it. We're going to have to hit this compute column when we're all done at the bottom. So you're not going to actually see the data show up in your worksheet until you're done. So I've got them all in here. Okay, I can check it over, make sure I haven't missed anything, and then I click on compute. Scroll over to the far, far right, and you will see that new variable there. Now, what is going on? You'll see this F sub X here. That means it's just basically a, a formula is being used or function to create this column. This column is not being saved back in your, your worksheet, your CSV or Excel worksheet. It's not being saved there. It only exists right now within JASP. What I can do is I can save this as a JASP worksheet just by going up to File, Save As, you know, locating where I want, and then I can save it as a, as a JASP sheet, and then it will um, save this particular column. It doesn't save the data in there, but it saves this, what the formula is, so that it can pull the formula back and recalculate it each time you reopen JASP, essentially what happens. So I've got that calculated in there. Again, that's what that means. Now this, again, is always live. So if I were to um, go back and start working on some analyses or something like that, I'm maybe working on some descriptive statistics or a t-test or something like that, what's going to end up happening is um, I can come back and see this formula again by clicking on that F x right there um, when I come back to my data. Then I can change it. Like I say, maybe I've, I found out, oh, I left one out or I want to take one out. And then I can come up here and I can edit it and change it anytime and it will immediately change what's calculated there. Okay, so that's one simple example of creating a new variable. Now let's say I want to create another variable. <clears throat> my race variable here, I have three fictitious, fictitious race groups, okay, because this is fictional data. Let's say that group one is the white group, which it often is. Um, maybe group two is black and group three is everything else, and that, that, that was a made sense to simplify to that level for what I was doing. But let's say I want to simplify it more. Maybe I'm going to do a t-test and I really just want to compare white, non-white. That type of thing does happen a lot. And so I want to to do a t-test, I'm going to need just two categories. Race has three. So I'm going to actually create a new variable from this that shows, um, that does that. What you can't do here, as far as I know, is to overwrite the data, change the data in a column. You have to create a new column that has the data changed the way you want it. So I can't change this column so that all the twos and threes all become twos or something. I have to leave it as it is, create a new column based on this one. To do that, again, I'm going to click on the plus button. I'm going to cut, um, do a, a, I'm going to call it WNW, white non-white, okay? And I'm going to make that a nominal variable, okay? Create. I get this same interface pop up now. It's cleaned up, um, you know, it's vanished from the other one. And what I'm going to do for this particular case is I'm going to use something called an if else. If you scroll through these things, these are various functions on the right. This one right here I use quite often, if else. And what I'm going to basically do is tell it if something is true, then my new variable has one value. If something else is true, then my new variable has a different value. So let's suppose what I want to do is I want to say if it's white, I'm going to make it a zero. If it's non-white, I'm going to make it a one because I'm going to do some test where that's the comparison I'm going to make. Well, in order to do that, I need to tell it what, what it's testing. It's testing in my original race, whether it was a one or not, and then what to do. So what we're going to do is first fill out this test section. If you click on it, what you can do now is take this plus, the, no, sorry, not the plus, the equals, and I just clicked on the equals and put it in there. If that didn't work for you, you can click, you can click and drag it into there. So I've got this equals, so I'm going to do an equals condition, and I'm going to basically tell it if one of my, my existing variable called race Okay, this one right here, so I'm going to click and drag it to that green block, box, or oval really. Okay, if it equals, 
Okay, I have somehow got it, got it in there twice. I'm not sure what I did. Clicked on it twice. I can delete if I mess up. If race equals one, okay, that means that they're white. Race equals one. And then, and in place of a then, I'm just going to put zero. Else, put a one. So that basically tells it if the original variable of race had a one in it, meaning they were white, I'll put a zero. Otherwise, I'm going to put in a one. And then I'm going to click compute column. It'll give you an error if you did something wrong. I can scroll over here and I can see how it how that's done. Okay, I've got my zeros and ones in there. It all looks like I want it to look. And again, I've got both of these. I can click on this one to go back to editing that bare one, and I can click on this one to go back to editing this one if there's something I want to do about it differently. Okay, now I want to show you a third situation. <clears throat> this third situation is a little bit trickier, and there's a couple options of how to deal with it. Um, in this particular data set in the gender column, I have one for male, two to female, as is very often done. But if you scroll through it, you're going to see a zero pop up. This particular so <clears throat> data set did something that's terrible. It's fictitious, but it's terrible. I do see it um, come, come up from time to time. It used zero to mean it was a missing value. So when we've got zero represented as a missing value, um, we have a problem because it doesn't know, you know, to, to include, it just thinks there's a third gender or something like that going on. In an ideal situation, what we would do in that particular case is we would use that if else and we would say basically if gender here equals zero, change it to a missing value. If not, leave it as what it is already. Most software you can do that. If you are using R directly, you could do that. But I haven't found a way to be able to do that in JASP. If I try to put in something like an NA that means missing value typically, it just thinks NA is just an, like what I wanted, like it was text or something, you know. It thinks it's a meaningful value, not a missing value. So I haven't found a way to be able to do that. So let me, let me tell you what the particular options are. We can't just change things in here. The easiest option of all, of course, in this particular case would be go back to that original spreadsheet, Excel sheet, or CSV, or whatever data file you have and change it there. Um, particularly here when I just have one value, one, one case where it comes up as a zero, go change it there. That's one particular thing you can do to deal with that situation with a missing value. The other thing you can do is you can go into your options, preferences, data. Okay, so I want the triple blue here, preferences, data. And here it gives me a missing value list. If I were to put zero in there, it now believes anywhere there's a zero, anywhere in my data set, anywhere in the data set, that that zero represents a missing value, okay? The problem with that, of course, is that there may be other variables where zero is not represent a missing value. So that might not work for me, so I might have to take that out, okay? So that's, that's something to be aware of if something you can do here as a quick workaround. You just have to be aware that that's going to apply to all your variables, not just the one. And, and those kinds of things happen when you're dealing with fairly simplified software. So, so I'm not going to be able to do that here. What I would probably honestly in this case is go back to my original CSV file. There is a function up here that lets you go the other direction. If something is a missing value, replace it with some other real value. It'll let you go that direction. But it doesn't seem to that I have found have a way that you can replace a value with a missing value. So that's something um, to be aware of. Um, another option is if you were to um, scroll down and let's say that I was going to do some kind of analysis that involved gender. Maybe I was going to do a t-test comparing two genders. I can go over and I can um, filter out, okay, that particular row, okay, and um, that gets to be something that gets to be a little bit more complicated on its own. So, so there's there's a variety of things you can do to deal with it, but in this case, I would just uh, change that zero to something else in my original value, and then make sure that something else I changed it to is reflected. 
up here when I go to my preferences. And again, these this is what I have here. These first four are all default in JASP, but this negative nine I put in because there was a data set I was using where they often use a negative nine to represent a missing value, so I added that one in myself. But you could go back to your CSV and put in a, a dot period. You could put in a, the capital NA or, or either of these NAN options um, to make it work. So that's my my brief indication of you know or overview of how to create some new variables here in JASP.